This is Twit. Continuing on, here's another thing you didn't ever expect Apple to do. Promote its how long its stuff's going to last. <laughs> uh, Apple published a white paper this week called Longevity by Design to explain the company's principles for designing for longevity. A careful balance between product durability and repairability. That's not the... I guess, you know, I always, Apple stuff's well made. But you always feel like, you know, you, it's not really designed to last forever. Yeah, but the paper, the paper does a really good job. They're they're trying they're trying to. Um, we talked earlier in the show about how some they're trying to resist regulation in the EU and being being heavy handed, and not prevent, presenting a really accurate uh, presentation. Here, they're getting they're very quietly trying to address. Hey, if people are complaining that uh, a lot of our products are really really hard to repair. We would like to at least add to the conversation by saying our products are designed according to the white paper from the ground up so that you don't have to repair them quite so often that they're more durable you won't have to replace the screen because they're not going to crack that you're not going to get water ingress uh, that uh, the batteries are designed so that we're cycling them so that they don't need to be replaced as oftentimes and backing this up with uh, figures that of course we need to double check on but basically saying that hey look we're uh, over time our uh, our phones are uh, are lasting five to six years 40 40 to something percent longer than android phones uh our resale value is way way up there again compared to android phones uh and that we third party we only repair about 37 38 percent of our own phones most of the stuff is being done by third parties so as I, it should be labeled as propaganda, but that propaganda is a neutral term. It's not necessarily positive or negative, but I think it's very, very effective, at least putting it out there that if someone is recklessly saying that, oh, well, Apple wants us to wants phones to break, wants to, them to uh, be obsolete in two years. They don't want people to be able to repair their own phones because they want people to uh, simply buy brand new ones instead. They're at least putting out a counter argument that is very, very credible and it underscores things I think all of us have known for a long, long time that, I mean, iPhones can be handed down twice, three times in a family before they become undesirable let alone obsolete uh, and they do tend to absolutely stand up i've the my iphones have been like I, I, ca I tend to carry them around as much as i almost as much as i carry my android phones and they look much much nicer and they're much more resaleable than my android phones are everybody uh, has just clammed up on that one well, well fortunately I, mean, I, I, <laughs> I i i can say something there which is yeah i think that the, the truth is that apple works at such a scale that it's sometimes a challenge for them to balance uh, their products lasting a long time, their products not breaking, their products, like the battery is a problem, right? Because batteries go bad. Although there's the, the in the early days of smartphones, especially the, the thought was the smartphone will be obsolete before the battery goes bad because the smartphones are, right. it, are moving so quickly that, right. But now it's different. And so I think they changed the game, but they, they have, they have so much volume that that's a challenge. Right. And um, and then sometimes what we're looking for is not necessarily what they're looking for. So like they yeah. don't a lot of people are focused on battery, but don't talk about their focus on reducing scratch and shatter on glass screens and reducing water ingress where how many people crack their screen, how many people drop their phone in the toilet and have to get a new phone. And if Apple makes serious inroads on those, you, first off, it's the time you don't, I mean, nobody keeps track of the times that you didn't need to get a new phone, but it would substantially reduce the number of new phones that are being sold. But it's a little bit, you know, if your focus is on something like a removable battery or an easily removable battery, which is an issue, but it, you might be missing some of the places where they really have made progress. I think in the last five years, Apple's design of iPhones especially has shown that they've re they realize it's a mature product where they could they could probably make it more repairable and that that would be better for everyone. They've also, you know, they've got their trade-in programs. There's a lot they have done, but I think that there's a question of like, where do they draw the line and say, no, we're not going to yeah. do this. And I, I, I do think batteries is a thing that everybody should keep asking Apple about because mm -hmm. the fact is sometimes you've got a product that the only reason it's dead is because the battery is dead. It's true for iPhones. It's especially true of things like AirPods. And yeah. we've seen that in that that some other manufacturers have found other ways of approaching this. But we also know that if Apple cracks the code of making batteries more replaceable, 
the rest of the industry will follow them because that's what happens, right? They're like, oh, well, yeah. if Apple did it, we got to do it too. And so, you know, I think that there's more for them to do there, but, but it's not nothing that they've done things to keep their devices in service and not need repair because the iPhone is way more resilient now than it was even five years ago yeah. and certainly 10 years ago. And and to their credit, for the past couple generations of iPads and iPhones, they have been making steps to make things less absurd, so to speak. Like in the report, they, uh, again, this is propaganda in the sense of they're making their case and saying, saying things like, yeah, we use a lot of adhesives since that are kind of hard to take apart, but it's the adhesives that uh, that's, uh, make it uh, safe against water ingress that make it last uh, last a lot longer. But nonetheless, like the uh, last year's iPhone, they made a big change that made, uh, uh, that made uh, batteries easy to replace. The last generation of iPads, they changed the way that was designed so that you no longer have to tunnel through tunnel through you know you, you no longer have to like change somebody's contact lens by drilling in through the bottoms of their feet you know they can you can actually just take off the screen and then there's the there's the battery um but i, I wonder if like, what was promoting all this uh, again i'm glad they're making this statement because it is very very valid but i remembered that just three weeks ago uh they gave marquez uh, marquez brownlee like an exclusive look at uh, with a video i visited App, apple's secret iphone testing labs so clearly it's it, it's somewhere they've decided that okay we need to get ahead of regulation or bad press or whatever so we're going to make this into a, a a marketing priority to make sure people know that if our position is that if we make our phones hard, if, if there are reports that say that uh, our phones are ridiculously hard to repair or that we're obstructing right to repair, we feel as though we are addressing the problem at its root. At least, and here is why we believe that way. It's There's funny. Also it feels a little bit like a, a PR uh, stunt. Yeah, I agree, course. Andy. Uh, here is, yeah. <laughs> and this is a great graphic. Uh, starting from the first iPhone in 2007, what modules are repairable in the iPhone? The first one, the SIM tray. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> by, by, by 2013, SIM tray, battery, haptics, rear camera, main logic board, display, bottom speaker, top speaker, enclosure, true depth camera, back glass, main microphone. I mean, it's it's good PR, it, you know, absolutely. Um, Apple has to rec recognize, I think, they're, they have a lot of devices, so they have a high responsibility with a billion phones. That's a billion mm -hmm. phones that are going to be in the landfill sooner or later. They talk a lot about the used phone market. Uh, they also use this opportunity to say, don't buy third-party batteries. 88% of third-party sure. batteries tested by the uh, United Underwriters Labs caught fire exploded in at least one test. Um, and then there's a picture, picture of, I don't know what, it could be moon material, but I think it's actually, this <laughs> well, is a I think it's also third-party battery after an abusive overcharge test. And... It's also a preemptive, like if when the next person has their 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 phone catch fire, right. you know, it's people like people. We told if you. you start putting us, they're like, well, no, it's just that they people won't assume if you put this stuff out and you start talking through it, people won't assume that oh, Apple put out a bad battery. If you right. put out enough PR and and, the, and someone says, well, my phone caught fire, they'll be like, oh, I bet you they but it wasn't third theirs. Party phone, yeah, 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 third yeah. party battery. So the, so Apple, what did we say? What do we think about Apple's uh, access to repair? I mean, they. They fought for a long time the right to repair. Some say they still fight it, but they certainly have added capability for self-repair in some cases. Um, do we think they're really committed to that, or is it more uh, lip service due to regulation? I, th I think Jason had it had it right. They have a lot of priorities. I think repairability is one of them because remember that they also repair phones. So the quicker that they can do a turnaround on a phone, the better for them. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to make sure that they're going to make the most, uh, they're not going to make a framework style iPhone where oh, all you need is one screwdriver and you can have this entire thing out to completely apart in five minutes. It's not important. It's overkill. Uh, and I do think that this is, an, this is another case where because there is outside pressure to make things more repairable or at least less ridiculous <laughs> to fewer art what seem to be artificial obstacles towards repair i do think that that is entering into the pipeline a lot quicker and i i don't necessarily think that it should be easy to rep to replace a camera module because if you did something that broke a camera module that is that's not normal wear and tear that's something that just super bad luck or don't don't try to get a selfie in front of a hot springs and try to keep keep your hands on your phone. Here, here's, uh, here's a table but, la labeled expanding access to repair services, service and repair options for Apple devices. Uh, 
uh, you know, I mean, uh, they're increasing it. One of the things I thought was interesting, um, I don't know if they've talked about this, you're going to be able to uh, use used Apple parts and get support for calibration. Um, yeah, right. They currently don't do for true tone and stuff like that. Yeah, they don't yeah. currently don't do that. Um, Apple tools for rental, Apple tools for purchase, third party tools. So they're talking about support here uh, all the way from Apple itself to self-service repair. And yeah, they're making progress there. Um, yeah, they don't support third just, party parts, but they're making progress. There. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just obnoxious things like parts pairing, which is not in itself a problem. So long as a third party repair shop can get access to the tool they need right. to actually make this repair work. As exactly. long as they don't do the ridiculous things, I'm good. They yeah, do. Uh, they do is, have in their FAQ this fascinating question: Is designing for repairability better for the environment? <laughs> By the way, I mean yes. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out. It turns. It turns out. It turns yeah. out. No, it, it is. <laughs> it it is. Yeah, they're they're trying a lot of different things here. I think there was even a, a story in our in our notes for this episode from the information about how they are exploring this technology that basically you apply an electrical charge. I thought that was to really adhesive, cool. Yeah, and it just turns off and it's yeah. not an adhesive anymore. And that like, look, the Apple's goal I think ultimately is not to make products that are repairable by you at home by sliding a thing out and, right. you know, right? Like their goal is the product should be able to go to somebody who has tools and that they can repair your product or replace a part. And that doesn't have to be Apple, although Apple, you know, has its system, but it doesn't have to be Apple. I don't think ultimately Apple views this it repair itself as a as a, a profit center, nor do I think Apple philosophically believes that whenever anything breaks on an iPhone, you should throw it away and buy a new iPhone. I do think Apple has actually built a business around what Andy said, which is taking in old iPhones and if they're if they're refurbishable or resellable or the parts can come apart and be reused or recycled, like that there's a whole chain of use for them from just recycling all the way up to taking it and selling it at a much lower price in a market that where maybe the brand new phones aren't affordable. And like they built this whole structure around it. I think they, that part of them battles with their control freak side, which is like, oh, we only want the best LCD panels in, you know, or the best OLED panel in our in our phone. And these didn't weren't up to snuff. And so we don't like them. I don't think it's like, aha, we will sell them the expensive display and make money on the repair. I think it's much more the, oh, not that bad one. Don't give them that bad display. Or in the case of the battery, that battery is not up to our standards and it's got a bigger chance of, of being bad. So don't use that. But I think that I think it's more their control over like the perception of the quality of their product that if you get it repaired and with a lousy part, that then your iPhone experience is bad. But it's a, you know, it's a push and pull, right? Between them wanting to be environmental and them wanting to make money and them wanting to have control over the the parts and their products. And like, I, I think it's, I, I think they're conflicted is what I'd say, but I do think that they are getting better because, and, and this is going to be true with AI too, which is in the early days of a product category where things are barely even being put together, you know, the SIM tray is repairable, right? Because they're like, look, it's amazing this thing exists at all. Of course, it's one block <laughs> and there's nothing else in it, right? But over time, as the product matures, you get to the point where you're like, Yes, nobody repairs more phones than Apple, right? So there's nobody more vested in making them more repairable than Apple because Apple's the one who their repairers have to repair so many of these phones. So they're getting there, but it, and, it's taken them time. And and, and the thing is, I, I'm, every time this conversation comes up, I have repaired my own Apple devices. I have taken them to un, unauthorized, taken them to authorized, taken them to Apple. And at this point, I would never take a, a device to a non-authorized or Apple. <laughs> like, I mean, they're the only two that I would do it at, other than those. I would never go to an unauthorized or try to do it myself because it's never going to be the same. These are built at such a high high level of, the, the, the tolerances are so small that the chances of you actually being able to fix your phone or have an unauthorized uh, 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 repair shop fix your phone and have it ever be the same again is very low, you know, so you just have to know that when you get it back, it's probably never going to quite be the same. And maybe you can't afford to do it. And you decide that that's the, that's the cost you're going to pay, but you're paying that cost is that that phone is never going to be the same. It's just yeah. it without people who are properly trained to do that with all, with the proper tools. Um, it's, it's just not the same, you know, and, and it's just because we're not, you know, I tore apart laptops. I mean, within the first week of my Apple IIe, I was, I had my head in it. <laughs> I was reading, I was yeah. rewiring something. 
it's just come to a point where the tolerances are no longer the the boards no longer look like the inside of an Apple IIe. Yeah. They are, of course, extremely tight. And I just the, think the ICs aren't socketed anymore. That. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's there's. And the, the other and the last thing that we haven't talked about that's also kind of pertinent is that um, there are going to be a lot of people that if you, if Apple doesn't make these things easy to repair, authorized repair service, anything that's that's easy to get access to if you got a broken screen, um, Motorola makes some awesome two hundred dollar phones. Samsung makes some awesome two to three hundred dollar phones. And I don't mean that, oh my God, I'm suffering. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm using this Fisher Price shoe phone. It's like, no, it's really, really very, very good. And the person who's trying to get a six year old phone working again is not going to notice anything but improvements if they decide, well, it's going to cost 500. Uh, I can't get this repaired for less than three or four hundred dollars. It's going to cost me five to six hundred dollars for the iPhone. What's the latest one they have? The 11, the 12th, whatever, whatever the oldest one they keep in the line as the budget phone. If they have walk into a store with two hundred dollars to spend or just to, to get a contract phone, they might be diverted away to an Android phone because that's where the that's where the cheap stuff is going to be. So Apple is very, very much if they can walk in somewhere with a broken screen or a bad battery, walk out with a hundred and eighty dollar repair bill and an iPhone six, iPhone seven that's still working great. That is definitely in Apple's best interests. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. If you enjoyed this little snippet of our programming, make sure you check out the full Mac Break Weekly. The link is right down there. <laughs>